The grand chamber of the Eternal Concordat buzzed with nervous energy as representatives from the 12 most ancient civilizations in known space gathered for their 57th emergency session this cycle, which if you're keeping score at home, was a new record. Not that anyone was celebrating. High Counselor Zethrix of the Silicon Consciousness adjusted their crystalline form to catch the light more dramatically, a cheap trick they'd been pulling for the last 12 million years. Order! We must have order, they chimed, their harmonics suggesting they knew perfectly well no such thing would happen. I should probably mention that this isn't your typical aliens fear humans because of their superior warfare capabilities story. No, no, that would be far too sensible. The assembled council members gradually settled into their respective environmental chambers. The methane-breathing Valaxians bubbled anxiously in their tanks. The energy-based Luminoth flickered in patterns suggesting extreme agitation. Even the usually stoic hive mind of Beta Centauri was having trouble maintaining quantum coherence. The situation, Zuthrix continued, has become untenable. The humans... A collective shudder rippled through the chamber. Several lesser species representatives had to be escorted out due to spontaneous molting. At this point, you're probably expecting tales of humanity's fearsome warships or their devastating weapons. But trust me, it's so much worse than that. The humans have done it again. Zethric's crystalline structure clouded with distress. They've introduced another concept that defies all logical understanding. They call it a meme economy. The chamber erupted in chaos. The Valaxians' tanks began to boil. The Luminoth dimmed to nearly invisible levels of despair. The hive minds split into several smaller, panic-stricken consciousnesses. That's not the worst of it, interrupted Ambassador Klecks of the Temporal Archivist, their timeline fracturing with stress. We've discovered they intentionally consume substances that cause them pain for pleasure. They call them spicy foods. I should note that most species in the galaxy evolved with a very sensible aversion to pain. Humans? They turned it into a culinary art form. And let us not forget, added the quantum overseer of the collective, their probability waves fluctuating wildly, their bizarre ritual of saying thank you to their artificial intelligence constructs, which, I must stress, cannot feel emotions. Zithrix raised all seven of their appendages for silence. We've been monitoring their civilization for centuries now, and each discovery is more disturbing than the last. They work jobs they hate to buy things they don't need. They watch entertainment about their own monotonous lives for relaxation. They deliberately seek out content that makes them feel sad, calling it cathartic. Fun fact, three species went extinct trying to understand the concept of rage quitting. They simply couldn't comprehend voluntarily increasing one's own blood pressure over something called microtransactions. The question before us today, Zethrix concluded gravely, is not whether humanity is a threat to galactic peace. We're well past that point. The question is, how do we deal with a species that appears to run on chaos theory and spite? The chamber fell into a heavy silence, broken only by the occasional nervous beeping of environmental systems and the distant sound of a Valaxian stress bubbling. And thus began the galaxy's greatest headache, trying to understand a species that turned holding meetings about meetings into an art form. But we're just getting started. Oh yes, it gets so much better. Or worse, depending on your perspective. Though I suppose that's also a very human concept. Finding entertainment in others' misfortune. They even have a word for it, schadenfreude. And now I need a drink. Let's rewind a bit, shall we? To understand how humanity accidentally traumatized an entire galaxy, we need to go back to where it all started. And like most catastrophic misunderstandings in history, it began with something completely innocent. A laugh track from friends. The galactic survey ship Rational Observation had been monitoring the third planet of Sol for approximately 47 stellar cycles. Commander Ixel of the Deep Science Directorate prided himself on running the most boring observation post in the quadrant. That was until first analyst Verk burst into his meditation chamber, all six appendages trembling. Commander, we've intercepted something. At this point, I should mention that most galactic species communicate through a delightful mix of telepathy, pheromones, and interpretive dance. The concept of auditory communication was already weird enough. But what came next? Oh boy, 
The transmission crackled through the ship's sensors. Ha 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 ha! The entire bridge crew froze. Several junior analysts spontaneously developed stress spots. By the sacred equations, Ixtel whispered, what manner of war cry is this? Remember, folks, prior to this moment, no known species in the galaxy had evolved the ability to produce such sounds voluntarily. The closest equivalent was the death rattle of the Venusian spine slugs. The transmissions continued, each more terrifying than the last. Humans, apparently engaged in some form of ritual combat they called sitcoms, would make these horrifying sounds in response to what appeared to be psychological warfare tactics. Could someone be wearing any more clothes? Ha 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 analysis was grim. They appear to be mocking their own kind's attempt at protective covering and then celebrating it with that sound. If you think that's bad, just wait until they discover Twitter. Three solar rotations later, the observation team intercepted something that sent shockwaves through the entire galactic community. An image of a cat asking, I can has cheeseburger? The ship's AI had a nervous breakdown trying to decode it. The encryption specialists insisted it must be a military code of unprecedented complexity. After all, what kind of species would deliberately mutilate their own language for entertainment? Look at this one, Verex pointed at another transmission. They call it a rickroll. It appears to be some form of psychological torture where they trick each other into watching the same ceremonial dance repeatedly. Commander Ixtel's exoskeleton paled. And they do this voluntarily? Not only that, sir, they express frustration when it happens, yet continue to participate in the practice. Our behavioral analysts suggest it might be some form of endurance training. Fun fact, the Galactic Archive now categorizes the Rick role as a Class Three mimetic hazard, right alongside pictures of baby humans sneezing. But the real panic started when they discovered social media. The observation team watched in horror as billions of humans appeared to share their thoughts simultaneously, arguing about everything from planetary politics to whether a dress was blue or gold. It's like a hive mind, Verix theorized, but one that's completely unstable and constantly at war with itself. They call it trending topics. The final straw came when they intercepted something called a TikTok challenge. They're they're deliberately teaching each other to perform increasingly dangerous tasks, Ixitl reported to Galactic Command, his voice modulator glitching with stress, and they're doing it through synchronized dancing. To be fair, watching humans eat Tide Pods would disturb any rational species. The emergency report sent to the Galactic Council painted a terrifying picture, a species that had weaponized absurdity, turning cognitive dissonance into an art form. They deliberately created and shared cursed images. They communicated through something called emojis that somehow conveyed both literal and ironic meanings simultaneously. They had entertainment programs where they voted on which humans could produce the best sounds with their food intake organs. American Idol, as the humans called it. Most disturbing of all, the report concluded, they appear to be spreading. Their memes are beginning to appear in our own communication networks. Yesterday, I caught myself thinking about something called Wednesday Frog. I fear we may already be compromised. The Council's response was swift and unprecedented. Earth was to be classified as a Class X anomaly, a designation previously reserved for quantum singularities and really good pizza places. Speaking of pizza, you should have seen the panic when they discovered pineapple as a topping. Three separate species filed formal charges against Earth for crimes against culinary causality. As the observation ship prepared to retreat to a safe distance, Commander Ixtel made one final log entry. We came seeking intelligent life. Instead, we found humans. The universe may never recover. And that, dear listeners, was just the beginning. Because if there's one thing more terrifying than humanity's capacity for chaos, it's their ability to export it. But we'll get to that disaster in the next chapter. Right after I process my trauma from discovering what humans call dad jokes. If there's one thing you should know about galactic diplomacy, it's that most species prepare for their first official contact for at least a century. Humans? They sense someone who hadn't slept in 36 hours because of budget airline connections. Classic humanity. Ambassador Sarah Chen had been awake for so long that she was pretty sure she could taste colors. After three connecting flights, a quantum leap, and whatever that thing was that the aliens called dimensional realignment, 
She was running purely on spite and what remained of the airport coffee she chugged in Denver. The Galactic Council's first contact chamber was packed with representatives from 17 species. The air sparkled with translators, probability fields, and enough recording devices to make a YouTuber jealous. For those keeping score at home, yes, humanity's first official diplomat to the stars was basically a walking coffee zombie. No, this is not the worst diplomatic decision humans have ever made. That honor belongs to the hot dog incident of 2127, but we don't talk about that. Sarah felt it coming, that unstoppable urge. She tried to fight it, but... Yan! The chamber erupted in chaos. The Valaxian's methane tanks bubbled violently. The Luminoth dimmed to emergency levels. Three different species activated their defense shields. It's displaying its feeding orifice, shrieked Ambassador Sussatol of the Silicon Consciousness, their crystalline form clouding with terror. This must be the war cry we intercepted in their transmissions. Sarah blinked blearily. What? No, sorry, I'm just tired. Would anyone like some coffee? I brought enough to share. Now here's where I should mention that no one had bothered to run a biochemical analysis of caffeine on alien biology, an oversight that would go down in galactic history as the great perception shift, or as humans later called it, that time we got the entire Galactic Council high AF. The Arcturian ambassador, being the bravest, or possibly just the most curious, accepted a small cup of the steaming liquid. The chamber watched in horrified fascination as they consumed it through their absorption membrane. For exactly 2.3 seconds, nothing happened. Then their eyes, all seven of them, dilated to maximum capacity. I, I can taste the quantum foam, they announced. Are those numbers floating in the air always visible to humans? Pro tip. Caffeine, when introduced to non-human biology, apparently acts as a reality-bending psychedelic. Who knew? Before Sarah could stop them, other ambassadors began sampling the coffee. The hive mind of Beta Centauri split into 17 distinct personalities, each convinced they were a different Earth meme. The silicon consciousness began vibrating at the exact frequency of a rickroll. The humans have weaponized consciousness expansion, someone screamed, though it was hard to tell who because half the chamber was now experiencing time non-linearly. Sarah watched in horror as the dignified Galactic Council devolved into chaos. The Valaxians were attempting to recreate TikTok dances despite being essentially sentient gas. A group of energy beings had become convinced they were cat videos and kept trying to fit themselves into small boxes. I understand everything now, declared Sotol, their crystal form now pulsing in rainbow colors. The dress was both blue and gold. Schrodinger's cat is just spicy object permanence. For the record, this is why most species now classify coffee as a Class A hallucinogen, right alongside antimatter, and that feeling you get when you think you heard your phone vibrate, but it didn't. Sarah, running purely on diplomatic training and her own caffeine tolerance, tried to salvage the situation. Maybe we should take a break. Get some water? Water? The Arcturian ambassador was now floating upside down. Is that the one that makes you see through time or the one that makes your bones angry? The temporal archivists, who had made the mistake of drinking espresso, were experiencing every possible timeline simultaneously. Half of them were convinced that they had invented something called post-ironic proto-memes, and the other half were trying to explain why Wednesday Frog was actually a sophisticated commentary on temporal elasticity. To this day, several species maintain that pumpkin spice lattes are actually a form of mind control. They're not entirely wrong. It took three standard cycles for the effects to wear off. When the council finally reconvened, they had reached several conclusions. One, humans were far more dangerous than previously suspected. Two, their ability to regularly consume consciousness-altering substances and still function was terrifying. Three, something called Pizza Rat was either a profound philosophical statement or evidence of human mastery over probability manipulation. Four, no one could quite remember who had taught the hive mind to dab, but it needed to stop. The official report of the first contact meeting was sealed in the deepest vaults of the Galactic Archives, marked only with the warning, contents may cause spontaneous enlightenment and or existential crisis. Sarah was simultaneously banned from and hailed as a hero by various species. 
The Arcturians even created a religion around the sacred being of perception. And that's how humanity accidentally invented space drugs. With coffee. Regular, boring Earth coffee. Though if you think that's bad, wait until you hear about what happened when they discovered energy drinks. Before we begin this chapter of our tragic tale, I should warn you that several alien species have classified what you're about to read as a mimetic hazard. Side effects may include involuntary groaning, face palming, regardless of whether your species has faces or palms, and the inexplicable urge to make terrible wordplay. Dr. Cursett of the Xenological Institute had spent 15 cycles studying human communication patterns. They were considered the galaxy's foremost expert on human linguistics, which was rather like being the universe's leading authority on organizational systems in a black hole. Fascinating, but likely to drive you mad. I've made a breakthrough, they announced to their research team, their antennae twitching with academic excitement. I've discovered a subset of human communication they call dad jokes. At this point, I feel compelled to mention that most alien species evolved with a natural aversion to linguistic paradoxes. The concept of words having multiple meanings was already pushing it, but intentionally misusing them for entertainment? Pure chaos. Observe this recording, Dr. Kurza continued, playing a captured transmission. Human child, I'm hungry. Human parent, hi, hungry, I'm dad. Three junior researchers immediately had to be treated for logic failures. The senior analyst began stress molting. The parent clearly knows the offspring's designation is not hungry, Kurzit explained, their exoskeleton pale with concern. Yet they deliberately perpetuate this falsehood. And the most disturbing part? This appears to be a common recursive behavior pattern. Remember how humans accidentally got the Galactic Council high on coffee? Well, this was worse, much worse. The research team discovered thousands of these dad jokes each one more devastating than the last. Why don't eggs tell jokes? They'd crack up. What do you call a fake noodle? An impasta. Why don't skeletons fight each other? They don't have the guts. The hive mind of Beta Centauri, still recovering from the coffee incident, made the mistake of trying to analyze the logical structure of these jokes. They spent three days stuck in a recursive loop of trying to understand why a chicken would have any motivation to cross a road. But the real crisis began when these jokes started spreading. Picture, if you will, a galaxy of highly advanced civilizations reduced to questioning the fundamental nature of reality because someone couldn't resist asking why six was afraid of seven. The first reported case was an Arcturian quantum physicist who, during a presentation on string theory, suddenly asked, what did the photons say when they checked into a hotel? I don't need a room. I'm traveling light. The entire symposium had to be evacuated. Then the Valaxians, typically known for their Stoic philosophy, began incorporating puns into their sacred texts. Their high philosopher caused a diplomatic incident by asking the Silicon Consciousness, what do you call a crystalline being with a grudge? Salty. The Silicon Consciousness, it should be noted, still hasn't forgiven them. Dr. Kurzit documented the spread with growing horror. The infection appears to be mimetic in nature. Once exposed to these dad jokes, species develop an inexplicable urge to create their own, despite causing obvious distress to their listeners. It's as if the jokes operate on some sort of twisted pain-pleasure principle that defies our understanding of psychology. But the true existential crisis came when the aliens discovered human sarcasm. You're saying, clarified Supreme Commander Yi Yixtil during an emergency council session, that humans routinely say the exact opposite of what they mean, and other humans not only understand this, but find it entertaining. Oh, great observation, replied Dr. Kurzit, accidentally deploying sarcasm and causing three diplomatic incidents. Fun fact, the galactic translation matrix had to be completely reprogrammed to include tone indicators. They literally had to invent new mathematics to compute the difference between sure fine and sure fine. The paranoia reached new heights when they discovered passive-aggressive behavior. How can we trust any human communication, demanded the temporal archivist. When they say, no offense, they're about to cause offense. When they start a sentence with, not to be rude, rudeness is imminent. They say, with all due respect, when they mean precisely the opposite. The council commissioned a study to analyze human communication patterns. The findings were disturbing. 
60% of human communication meant exactly what it said. 30% meant the opposite of what it said. 10% existed in a quantum state of meaning, both or neither, simultaneously. 100% of humans seemed to instinctively understand which was which. The math adding up to more than 100% caused additional panic among the more mathematically rigid species. Dr. Kurzit's final report to the Council was grim. Humans have evolved to use confusion as a social bonding mechanism. They have weaponized linguistic ambiguity. And worst of all, these traits appear to be contagious. The report was interrupted by a junior council member asking, what do you call an alien studying human humor? The chamber fell silent in horror. Unidentified flying joker. And that, dear listeners, was when the council realized that quarantine was futile. The dad jokes had achieved interstellar transmission, though some say that somewhere in the vast expanse of space, the hive mind is still trying to figure out why that chicken crossed the road. Before we delve into this chapter, I should mention that what you're about to read caused three different species to update their classification of humans from chaotic unpredictable to terrifyingly inevitable. The Galactic Research Institute's report on human survival mechanisms began with a single chilling observation. They just keep going. Dr. Valara, head of xenobiology, had been studying human endurance when she discovered something that defied all known laws of biology, retail workers during what humans called Black Friday. The subjects have been awake for 26 Earth hours, she reported, her tentacles trembling. They've been screamed at by 147 different humans haven't eaten anything except something called break room vending machine coffee, and yet they persist. Surely, her colleague interrupted, they must be reaching their biological limits? That's just it, Valora whispered. They're running on something they call spite. For context, most species in the galaxy evolved with sensible survival mechanisms like avoid danger and rest when tired. Humans? They invented caffeine pills and said, sleep is for the weak. The research team documented countless instances of humans pushing beyond normal biological limits for increasingly bizarre reasons. Subject continues working on final dissertation draft despite not sleeping for 72 hours. When asked why they don't rest, they responded, sleep is just death being shy, and I refuse to let my thesis win. At this point, several species started questioning whether humans actually needed sleep at all or if they just did it out of habit. But the true horror came when they discovered deadline adrenaline, the ability of humans to procrastinate for weeks and then accomplish seemingly impossible tasks in the final hours before a deadline. They're deliberately inducing stress responses for enhanced performance, Dr. Valara reported, her scales losing color. One subject claimed they work better under pressure, and then proceeded to complete three weeks of work in six hours, sustained entirely by something called monster energy and the pure desire to prove their professor wrong. The Galactic Council was particularly disturbed by the concept of comfort food. The idea that humans would intentionally consume high-calorie substances for emotional satisfaction defied all rational explanation. You mean to tell me, clarified High Counselor Zithrix, that when humans are sad, they eat something called mac and cheese, not for nutritional value, but because it provides emotional support. Even worse, Valora continued, they have entire categories of food designated for specific emotional states. Break up ice cream, stress chocolate, victory cake. They're using their digestive systems as mood regulators. Several species now believe that human stomachs must contain some form of primitive emotional processor. The alternate explanation, that humans just really like eating their feelings, was deemed too terrifying to consider. But the discovery that truly sent shockwaves through the galactic community was human persistence hunting. The revelation that early humans would literally chase prey until it collapsed from exhaustion caused multiple species to file for restraining orders against Earth. The report read, they just follow things for days. The prey runs, the human follows. The prey rests, the human follows. The prey gives up from sheer psychological exhaustion, and the human is still following. To put this in perspective, imagine being chased by something that not only doesn't give up, but appears to be enjoying the pursuit. 
Now you understand why several species now classify jogging humans as psychological warfare. Dr. Valara's team documented other inexplicable survival traits. Humans working in customer service, surviving solely on repressed screams and break room birthday cake. College students existing in a quantum state of being both completely exhausted and somehow still functioning. Parents of newborns developing the ability to microsleep while standing. Something terrifying called one more episode that allows humans to override their body's need for sleep. But perhaps most disturbing was the human concept of pulling an all-nighter. They intentionally deprive themselves of sleep to complete tasks, the report stated, entering a state they call second wind, where they become simultaneously hyperproductive and completely unhinged. One subject reported having a philosophical debate with their desk lamp at 4 a.m. while completing their taxes. The Galactic Council's response was to classify human spite as a Class X biological weapon. The classification came with a warning. Never tell a human they can't do something. They will do it purely to prove you wrong, possibly while live streaming the entire process. It's worth noting that three different species tried to replicate human spite in laboratory conditions. All attempts failed, though one researcher did develop an unusual addiction to energy drinks and started calling their supervisor, bro. Dr. Valara's final report concluded, humans don't just survive, they spite vive. They have weaponized their own biological limitations by simply refusing to accept them. When faced with impossible odds, they don't give up. They make t-shirts about it and turn it into a challenge. The report included a final chilling observation. There appears to be no upper limit to what humans can achieve when powered by spite, deadline pressure, or the desire to prove someone wrong on the internet. And that, dear listeners, is why the galaxy now has a standardized warning system for detecting elevated levels of human determination. Though personally, I'm more concerned about their ability to survive on nothing but instant noodles and audacity. Before we begin this final chapter of bureaucratic horror, I feel compelled to warn you that what you're about to read has been classified as a Class X cognitive hazard by 17 different species. The mere concept has caused at least one hive mind to file for divorce from itself. After months of debate, the Galactic Council had finally decided to formally invite humanity into the interstellar community. The ceremony was planned with the kind of meticulous detail usually reserved for quantum surgery or organizing a teenager's bedroom. Nobody was prepared for marketing director Dave from Houston. I should mention that most advanced civilizations had evolved beyond the need for presentations, having developed telepathic consensus sharing or interpretive dance-based communication. They were about to discover why humans invented anxiety medication. Thank you for this opportunity, Dave began, opening his laptop. I've prepared a brief PowerPoint presentation about Earth's potential contributions to the galactic community. The words synergistic opportunities for cross-species collaboration and why it's out of this world appeared on the quantum projection screen, complete with word art and a clip art rocket ship. Three Arcturian diplomats immediately developed stress crystallization. For those wondering, yes, humanity managed to export comic songs to the stars. No, we haven't been forgiven for it. Before we begin, Dave continued, I'd like to go around the room and have everyone introduce themselves. Maybe share one fun fact? The Silicon Consciousness representatives began vibrating at the frequency of pure dread. The concept of fun facts had not been included in their threat assessment protocols. I'll start, Dave said cheerfully. I'm Dave, and I can't start my day without coffee. Who's next? Several species later added forced participation in ritualistic self-disclosure to their list of banned torture methods. The presentation continued. Slides appeared with bullet points that could have been emails, transition effects that the temporal archivist described as an assault on the very fabric of causality, pie charts that the hive mind insisted were actually hypnotic devices. But the true horror was yet to come. Now, I know we're running a bit behind schedule, Dave said two hours later, but I just have 47 more slides to go. It was at this moment that the galactic community realized humans had evolved beyond the need for biological weapons. They had bureaucracy. The council watched in mounting horror as Dave explained concepts like touching base, circling back, taking this offline, thinking outside the box, low-hanging fruit. 
Emergency reports began flooding in from across the galaxy. Humans everywhere were attempting to schedule quick sync-ups that somehow lasted three hours. They were creating something called email chains, with hundreds of recipients just to decide where to have lunch. But surely, High Counselor Zithrix asked during an emergency session, they must realize these meetings are unnecessary. The response from Dr. Valara was grim. They know. They complain about it constantly, and yet they continue to schedule them. Some even admit to enjoying the social aspects of what they call water cooler talk. Several aquatic species were particularly offended by the concept of gathering around stored water to exchange information that served no evolutionary purpose. The breaking point came when humanity introduced the galaxy to team-building exercises. The report read, they deliberately gather in groups to perform meaningless tasks like trust falls and office trivia. They appear to derive some form of satisfaction from this shared discomfort. Most disturbing of all, they often combine these exercises with something called icebreakers, ritualistic questions designed to force personal disclosures from unwilling participants. The council chamber erupted in chaos when they discovered casual Fridays and office birthday celebrations. You mean to tell me, one representative demanded, that they intentionally gather to consume sugar-based nutrients in honor of completing another orbital cycle while singing a mathematically discordant song? And they expect everyone to pretend to enjoy it, confirmed Dr. Valara, her tentacles drooping with despair. Three species immediately added mandatory fun to their list of war crimes. The final straw came when Dave ended his presentation with, I'll send around a doodle poll to schedule a follow-up meeting to discuss the points we've covered today. The Galactic Council reached their decision in record time. Humanity would be classified as too unpredictable for standard diplomatic relations. The official reason cited was their ability to weaponize boredom while simultaneously appearing to be immune to its effects. The classification came with a series of warnings. Never accept a calendar invite from a human without checking for a detailed agenda. The phrase, quick question, is considered a temporal paradox. Avoid anything labeled as a brainstorming session. If a human mentions synergy, retreat immediately. To this day, several species maintain that PowerPoint is actually a sophisticated form of psychological warfare. The humans haven't denied this, which is somehow more terrifying. The Council's final report concluded, while humans have demonstrated remarkable capabilities in science, technology, and spite-based achievements, their casual relationship with time wastage and their inexplicable enjoyment of forced social interactions makes them too dangerous to integrate into galactic society. Also, they keep trying to schedule virtual happy hours across time zones, which we're pretty sure violate several laws of physics. And that's how humanity managed to convince the galaxy that we're too chaotic to deal with, not through superior firepower or advanced technology, but through our mastery of unnecessary meetings and corporate jargon. Though personally, I think it was the icebreaker games that really sealed our fate. And so we reached the end of our tale. Though N might be optimistic, considering humans still haven't figured out how to conclude email threads properly, they just keep adding, thanks, with varying numbers of exclamation points until everyone gives up. The Galactic Council's final classification of humanity reads as follows. Species, human, Terra, Earth. Threat level, Paradoxically harmless, yet terrifying. Special handling instructions, yes, so many. The Council established a comprehensive set of protocols for interacting with humans, including never tell them something is impossible. They take it as a personal challenge. Don't accept food or beverages without a full chemical analysis, especially something called energy drinks. Avoid asking, how are you? Unless you have at least three hours to spare. If they say no offense, prepare to be offended. Never under any circumstances ask them, what's up? They will look up, laugh, and then explain why that's funny. I should note that the protocol document is currently in its 147th revision, largely because humans keep finding new ways to be simultaneously endearing and terrifying. But perhaps the most disturbing revelation came from studying human politeness. The discovery that humans will engage in elaborate social dances of courtesy, often saying the exact opposite of what they mean while everyone pretends not to notice, caused several species to develop anxiety disorders. They say, I'm fine, when they're clearly not fine, 
one researcher noted. They apologize when someone else bumps into them. They say, let's do lunch sometime with no intention of ever doing lunch. Their entire social structure is built on a foundation of mutually agreed upon fiction. The council's latest update has officially classified human politeness as more terrifying than outright aggression, because at least with aggression, you know where you stand. Which brings me to my final confession. I suppose I should reveal that I am, in fact, an alien anthropologist assigned to study human behavior. I've spent the equivalent of 12 Earth years trying to understand why humans find this situation amusing, why they laugh at their own chaos, why they turn their incomprehensible behaviors into something called memes. I still don't understand, and somehow that makes humans laugh even harder. Perhaps that's their true superpower. Not their spite, not their capacity for chaos, not even their ability to turn meetings into an art form of time wastage. Perhaps it's their ability to look at the fundamental absurdity of existence and respond with laughter. Though I must admit, I've started finding myself doing something humans call chuckling when I read my research notes. I'm scheduled for decontamination next week. And so humanity remains out there, spreading dad jokes across the cosmos, turning corporate jargon into an interstellar hazard, and probably planning to respond to this report with something they call a reaction video. May the universe have mercy on us all. And report. Note, the author has been placed on medical leave after being caught trying to organize a casual Friday in the xenobiology department.